I'm going to show you six organic ways that we can control weeds here on the farmstead. Y'all come on. What is happening y'all? Jason over here at Cog Kill. I've been wanting to try to put out more content and a light bulb went off. I've come up with an idea where I can make some shorter videos and give y'all some tips of things that I like to do or things that have worked and things that haven't worked. And I was like, how can I do this? How can I do this? And I thought, you know what? Let's do a farm and garden tip on Tuesdays. These videos are relatively gonna be a little bit shorter than my general videos. And also hopefully it may help somebody out there. So be on the lookout for these. I'm gonna give it a test run and see how it goes. Tell me what you guys think about this as well. But on today's first ever Car Kill Farm and Garden Tip Tuesday, we are talking about weeds. Weeds, 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 weeds. If there's one question I get asked a lot about, and that is how do I control weeds? Number one way is this bad boy right here this hoss wheelie plow what makes this this hoss wheelie plow so great is is that i can come through here two or three times a week especially early on when the weed pressure is on two or three times a week with this and it doesn't take very much time at all it just goes right through in between my rows like butter but if you do stay on top of it with this going through here a couple of times a week you'll notice as the season progresses you'll have less and less and less weeds there's all different types of these with all different prices so just do your research on it but i do love this house willy plow made in usa it's just really 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 well made another way that i like to control weeds and that is homemade weed killer y'all probably seen this but if not all it is is you take one gallon of just regular white distilled vinegar one cup of just regular salt and then a couple of tablespoons of dishwashing liquid it really does work now this is not going to be roundup and of course you don't want it to be roundup but i think a lot of people may think this stuff acts and works like roundup but it doesn't uh, you can spray this and within minutes especially on hot days you can just see the weeds just start wilting on down it's been about 20 or 30 minutes you can see this chamber bitter already starting to uh starting to suffer a pretty good bit I'll come back in a couple hours and show you again. But 20, 30 minutes in, you can see that the homemade weed killer is starting to work. And this is what it looks like after a couple hours. These roots may or may not be dead. This, the top foliage may be the only thing that's dead right now. I'll come back and spray this pathway again. And after you do it a few times, it'll pretty much keep the weeds at bay. A lot of times what this will do is, is it'll kill that top layer of green, but the roots and all could still be alive versus your typical Roundup or those type of weed killers that actually kill the roots. This will eventually kill the roots. And that is because of the salt content. If you keep spraying the area with this, it's eventually gonna have too much salt in the soil. So be, kind of be careful with this. If you're spraying this in your garden, you don't wanna build your salt level up too much. So again, just be careful with this. Another way I can control weeds here organically is with this bad boy right here. I call it the flamethrower. It's a weed torch or a garden torch. You can find these things at most of your home and garden centers, but I do enjoy using this. Now, I like to use this a lot of times, mostly in my pathways, because I found in the past that this torch is so hot that you can't see the actual area that it's heating up. So you think you, that it's not touching one of your plants and you come back the next day and your plant's dead because it gets so, so hot. So really be careful with that. But I like to use it in the pathways. I also like to use it like, for instance, especially in my raised bed garden. You, I've done it before in my big garden, but it is very, very time consuming. But say like, for instance, that I'm prepping my bed in the raised bed garden, so I'm just turning the soil 
soil over and what I may do is, is I may come back and hit the surface level with this to kill any weeds, any baby weed seeds or maybe baby weeds that I turned over. I did a whole video on this bad boy that's one of my favorite videos because it's pretty entertaining. If you missed that video, check out the link down below. Peachy, you got any tips on how to control weeds in the garden? No? You got tips on how to get belly rubs though, don't you? Yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> the next way I like to keep weeds at bay is just simply using the hoe. And there are three different ones I like to use depending on the situation. Trying to be cautious and, and being delicate. I love this little one-time cultivating tool or looks like you know Captain Hook on uh, Peter Pan. This one's just way better getting around plants in tight spaces where you have to be just a little bit more careful than usual. Another favorite of mine is this one. I just got this one this year. You know, I call it the chicken foot. This thing right here, I absolutely love versus a traditional hoe like this. Reason being is, is I find that the hoe moves a lot of dirt as where this one doesn't. The dirt kind of stays in place. It does move dirt, but to me, not quite as much as this. And that kind of makes, makes life just a little bit more easy. If you wanted something that was like kind of these kind of in one, and it is a planting hoe. And what I like about it is, and it's made for, you know, planting seeds. You can do your little furrow with it and come back and plant your seeds. But since it's got this small point in this narrow design here you can kind of use it like this one and you can be a lot more careful around plants with this style than you can say like a traditional hoe or one like this but you can turn this thing on its side and boom look at that it works like a traditional style hoe Now, of course, I like to control weeds with cardboard. I really love cardboard. If you follow my channel, you've heard me mention it before that I use cardboard a lot. The thing I like about cardboard is, is it breaks down and turns into compost. And more times than not, and for real, probably just more times, you can get cardboard for free. Furniture stores, appliance stores, grocery stores, these guys just will more likely just give it to you. I really, really, really love cardboard cardboard in my raised bed garden because I can just cut it or tear it and it'll fit just perfectly in my raised bed garden and then I can start dumping rabbit manure and compost on top of it and it all breaks down suppresses the stew out of weeds and it's basically all for free lastly it's not rocket science just old-fashioned hand pulling I can't get my hoss willy plow in here. I can get my um, I can get my hose or cultivating tools in here, but a lot of times when it starts growing together, I can't get in between it. Or if I do, I'll end up pulling up one of these plants. So really, honestly, the best way is is just to get in here and hand weed, which may not be everybody's favorite thing to do. I know all of us have lives, kids, jobs, family, so there's a lot going on in your life. So just do the best you can. And you know what? That's all you can do. Tell me what you think about Farm and Garden Tip Tuesday. Leave it in the comments below because I love to hear y'all's feedback on this. Hey guys, me and OP just want to thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in any cocky or farm shirts like this logo shirt here or even some peaches shirts, check out this link right over here. If you're new to the channel, like what you see, hit that subscribe button right down below. Y'all be good. <laughs>